All right, I need to kick a movement here. I'm not even going to lead into this thing or anything else. It is a unscriptural heresy. This thing here, I'll just show you this real quickly. The five solas, Latin there. Okay, uh, sola fide by faith alone, sola scriptura by scripture alone, sola Christus but through Christ alone, sola gratia by grace alone, sola, soli, uh, okay, solus Christa, Christus. Sola gratia. I'm probably pronouncing this wrong. I don't really care much. Latin's not my language, and I don't really care to learn it. Sola, uh, soli de Dio gloria, whatever. Glory to God alone, whatever. Um, a lot of that stuff is true, but the issue is here, Reformed theology is very, very dangerous. Um, Reformed theology is mostly post-millennial. I probably should do a study sometime on the, the dangers of Reformed theology. Um, a lot of them are all millennial and things, too. Um, they'll deny, they, the, the book of Revelation all happened in the past. There is no coming mark of the beast or whatever else. There's no rapture. There's no anything. It's the church that has to become victorious and all this stuff. It's satanic, okay? Reformed theology is, just to give you a little synopsis here, Catholics like Martin Luther and a lot of these guys, uh, John Calvin and things, and they take... Um, uh, Catholicism, and they reform it. They remold it into something new. Um, that's not a teaching of Scripture. Okay, As Bible-believing Christians, we reject Roman Catholicism. We understand that it's Mystery Babylon, Revelation chapter 17. Uh, we can't reform what God is going to destroy. All right. uh, very important to understand that. But there's this movement, this satanic movement of easy believism, and they come out and they say, Salvation, they get real good at this, so I'll, I'll try to act here. Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, by the word of God alone, you know, and stuff like this. And you go, oh, wow, it sounds really good. Um, but here's the problem. They will say that and make you think that that's what Scripture says. Now, I'll say this. Scripture does teach that right now in this dispensation that salvation is by grace through faith Okay, that's there. That's a teaching of Scripture. But here's the little subtle trick of Satan. These guys will come through and they, and they you know, this by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone, by the Scriptures alone. And they keep, they doing all this stuff and they'll repeat it over and over and over again, making you think that it's in Scripture. It's nowhere in Scripture. As a matter of fact, let me show you something which is rather telling. By faith alone, faith alone. Alone, sola fide. Okay? Does the Bible ever say faith alone? Well, that exact phrase, no. Not one verse in your King James Bible that says faith alone. With those two words together. But it is ironically in a verse of Scripture. The words faith and alone are in one verse. Check this out. James chapter 2, verse 17 even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. So the Bible does say faith and alone, but it puts works in there. Why? Well, because this book is written to uh, James, a servant of God and the, and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. You see it? So they say, by faith alone. By faith alone. Well, there's your faith alone right there. Verse 17. You see it? Who's it written to? Well, it's written to a group of people that are going to be there in the time of Jacob's trouble. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Two things. Faith and works is in the time of Jacob's trouble. But these heretics come along and they say, you know, and you'll hear them, they'll say this, these easy believers and people, they deny faith and works in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's always by grace alone, through faith alone. They do that thing. It sounds real pious. It sounds really, really good. We reject works and stuff like this. You know, they reject it. And they'll, but they'll reject it for the whole Bible. See, you won't be saved by works today, but they will be in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's very interesting. Okay? Very important. 
and I keep seeing this, different people and stuff, you know, and, and they'll do this uh, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And, and you, you know, it's this like mantra and, and they, just, they just keep saying it and saying it and saying it and saying it. And it starts to get into your head and you think, well, I'm saved by grace alone, through Christ alone and, and st stuff like this. This whole faith alone thing, it's not even in the King James Bible, right? Salvation today, to explain it again, salvation today is Jesus Christ paid for your sins, his death, burial, resurrection. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. That's salvation. Okay? But salvation will produce a changed life. I mean, if I said to you, I mean, it's just this whole thing is insane. This whole easy believism thing. They say salvation, anybody that believes, just believe in Jesus. Just believe. There doesn't have to be a change. Well, that's amazing. You see, because for many, many years, you know, for the first 36 years of my life, I believed I was married. You know, did I have a wife to prove it? No. Uh, was my life really, was I really living like a, a married man? No. No, when I said, I'm married, things changed in my life. You know, I'm a married man. I have a wife. I have, you know, a coverture in, not in this Bible, it's another Bible, I don't have it here right now. I have a marriage coverture, okay? <laughs> you know, there are things that changed when I got married. There are things that changed in my life when I got saved. You know, and these easy believism people, it's its just, I get i get very worked up about this. But I've, I'm seeing this thing, and I, you know, again, you know, a, a lot of you are like, why are you bringing this up? I see stuff in the comments, I see other things and whatnot, and I'm just like, you know what, I need to say something about this. This five sola stuff, stay away from it, okay? Uh, don't repeat that. By grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, through, the, you're going back to the Reformed theology stuff, right? It's very dangerous. All right, let your speech, the way you talk, come from this book. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4 represents the gospel that we preach and believe today. All right, this grace alone, faith alone, scriptures alone, Christ alone, all this stuff, you know, in, in what they're saying is, is, you know, true. But again, they're, they're, they're saying this thing as though it's scripture, you know, and you have Luther comes up with his catechism and a lot of these other reformers, they're coming up with things that are extra scriptural, extra biblical revelations and stuff like this, that you have to have your Bible and Luther's catechism, you know, with all the, and creeds and confessions and all this other stuff. They're Catholic, just a different branch of Catholicism is all that they are. So, you know, this... Uh, this whole thing of this by faith alone, by scripture alone and all that stuff. Well, okay, salvation today. Yes, faith. We have faith in what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. Of course. You don't have to do continuing works, good works to maintain your salvation. That's not there. Okay. Well, all the Bible teaches is that when you get saved, you will have a changed life. Things are going to change. Obviously, you know. And what I preach and teach is, if you haven't had that changed life, if there isn't something there that happened, and I don't mean that you become sinlessly perfect, like some of the Satanists say that I you know, supposedly teach, okay? If you haven't had a major change in your life, something you know, like, wow, okay, this is really real, then you're probably not saved. You know? Can you relate to the people in the Bible, in the New Testament? Can you relate to the Apostle Paul? Say, no, I can't, you know, it just seems strange to me. It seems so foreign. You need to think about your salvation, all right? And these people that are coming around just saying, all you got to do is believe, just believe. Doesn't have to be any change, doesn't have, you know, whatever. It's easy believism. Easy believism is a satanic heresy, all right? They make no provision for false converts unless the false converts are people that say your life has to change as a result of salvation, you know, I'm a false convert. I'm a false preacher. I'm lost and on my way to hell because I believe salvation is finished with Jesus Christ. And when you put your faith in him, then he changes your life. You don't change your own life to work your way to heaven 
uh uh-uh. I'm sealed until the day of redemption. He changed my life. And he continues to change my life. All right? Not to save me eventually. No, I'm saved right now. If I drop dead in five minutes, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. You know, regardless of what things I've cleaned up in my life. So, you know, I just wanted to make a real real short little video here. It's probably going a little bit longer than just a short video, but it just, it just, I'm, I'm getting really irritated with this whole thing, this uh, easy believism thing, and they just keep repeating this, these five solo things and stuff like that. Um, if it's not in Scripture, brethren, don't mess with it. Okay? That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.